This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in the heavenly realms, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. So my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. As I'm taught the Word of God, my life has changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen. Give a dozen people a high five, and you may be seated this morning. So let me begin by asking how is the best, the most wonderful, the most blessed congregation in America? Are you doing all right? Well, you're sure looking good. As we begin this morning, I want to wish you love. I wish you joy. I wish you every happiness. I wish you physical health and length of life. I wish that your life would be as full and as blessed and as fulfilling as mine has been. I wish you love. I said Wednesday night, when someone's trying to use you, they'll tell you what you want to hear. But when someone's trying to help you, they'll tell you the truth. And so that's what we're trying to do from the Word of God. That's the tow line. That's the benchmark. That's the plumb line is the Word of God. The great apostle of faith and healing, Smith Wigglesworth, used to say that Mark 4, 28 was his favorite verse in the Bible. King James was, of course, the version he had. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. And so in these days, we're teaching on the miracle of seed faith giving, and we're showing you steps that you can use, how you can use this principle in your life to step up to the next level financially. But also these principles work in every area of life, for example, in healing. Our basic premise in this series is if our giving isn't a stretch, then it's not faith. Now, I don't mean to be critical, but we get in habits, we get in routines. And the problem is, when we get in a habit, we get in a routine with our giving, what was a stretch 10 years ago is not a stretch today. What it took faith to give 10 years ago, it doesn't take any faith to give today. Say it out loud, God is my source, so I'm going to give so that it will be given unto me And after my seed is in the ground, I'm going to believe God for my harvest. Now, I've been giving you three principles of seed faith giving. These are from Oral Roberts' book, The Miracle of Seed Faith. Number one, God is the source of your supply. Number one, God is the source of your supply. Number two, God wants to be first in your life and in your giving. God wants to be first in your life and in your giving. Whatever you give, give it as seed faith. And number three, when you give, expect a miracle. When you give, expect a miracle. In other words, it's not just enough to give or to tithe or to sow your seeds of faith financially. You got to get your faith on it. When you give, expect God to use it to further his gospel, but also to multiply back into your life in the form of meeting your needs and empowering you to reach your faith goals, all things being equal. If you're a moral person, and if you're a tithing Christian, and if you are industrious, that is not a slacker, what is the difference between Christians who dramatically pull ahead and others who are just kind of blessed? And the answer is right here in this series, The Miracle of Seed Faith Giving. Now, I'm going to take a little side journey right here because there's something on my mind every seven days. And I want you to understand, I want you to be, have clear understanding about something. I'm, I'm mindful every seven days. I think about people from my past that I knew decades ago. 
and they have spent decades living for the Lord. They have spent decades in the ministry. They have spent decades serving Jesus and the work of the gospel. Wonderful people. People who will be highly rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm talking about wonderful people. But I don't even live in the same solar system as them. God has so blessed and prospered and opened up the windows of heaven. This is on my mind every seven days. Because it cannot be favoritism, both in the Old and New Testaments. The Bible says that God shows favoritism to no man. So it can't be favoritism. So there must be other principles at work because we're not talking about whoremongers, adulterers, drunkards, drug addicts. You know, we're not talking about that. We're talking about wonderful people and they love the Lord and they've been living for the Lord and they've been faithful to their spouses and they've been preaching the gospel and, and they've been doing the work of the kingdom of God. Decades, I'm talking about decades. I'm not talking about three weeks, decades. And this is what I'm trying to get over to you. See, because I claim no credit. Amen. See, I'm not saying, well, I was smart or I was shrewd or I did this. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is there's two key principles that people leave behind. They leave blessings behind. They leave blessings on the table and it's two things that in 2022, people just, they just don't want to hear about it. But I'm telling you, all things being equal. You take two Christians who are moral people, two Christians who are tithers, two Christians who are faithful to their spouses. What is the difference between those who just muddle through and those who dramatically pull ahead? And then... Because I'm such a great guy, I don't want to keep it a secret. Right. You understand that? I want, to, I want you all to know, amen, I want you to be as blessed and as healthy and as prospered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to keep it a secret. Amen. amen. I want you all to know. See, there are always new levels in life and there's always new levels in God. Now, the two things people don't want to hear about in 2022 are being a doer of the Word of God. That requires action. And then the other thing is a similar activity, and that is following the leading of the Holy Spirit. And both of those tie into this series and in this message. Now, the world and religion are both totally hypocritical when it comes to money and success. And I'm going to give you an example. It's an old example, but it's great. On Friday, September 5, 2003, there was an article in the BBC on the new Hindu goddess in Kathmandu. She was a six-year-old girl who had been chosen earlier that year as the new Hindu goddess. Tell your neighbor, anybody they have to vote on is not a goddess. But that's how it works. So the city of Kathmandu was charging the tourist $2.50 just to see her, which by past experience would have raised $200,000 a year. But that was 2003. You bring that up into $2,022, that would be $939,000 a year that Kathmandu expected to rake in off this goddess. But no one saw her because the girl went on strike demanding 10% of the proceeds <laughs> or an estimated $20,000 a year or in 2022 money, that'd be $93,900 a year. Now, let me tell you what, if all this humble pie poverty routine were not totally bogus, the city of Kathmandu would not have charged tours to see her, and she and her family would not have de demanded 10% of the proceeds. I want you to understand that religion is totally hypocritical. It's a racket. And here at Faith Christian Center, we're not into religion. In fact, I've had people call me irreligious, and I can find no fault in that criticism. We're not, we're not talking about religion here. 
You know, Sue texted me from Cincinnati and said, why does everybody here have such a poverty mentality? I texted back, Roman Catholic city. Amen. Amen. Religion is hypocritical when it comes to success and money. You know, Paul Young Cho pioneered and pastored the largest church in the world until he went to be with the Lord. He sat on the boards of several Bible schools and seminaries, and he talked about how hypocritical all these Bible college and seminary professors were because they all taught against what he taught. They all taught against success. They all taught against prosperity. But because he sat on the boards of these Bible schools and seminaries, he knew every year all of those professors wanted what? They wanted a pay raise. So it's just set it aside. Just set it aside. Though what the world has to say about success, what the world has to say about money, even what religious relatives have to say, criticizing whatever you're doing, just set it aside and go with the word of the living God. Seed faith giving is not tithing. And tithing is not seed faith giving. That's the message this morning. Seed faith giving is not tithing, and tithing is not seed faith giving. Tithing is what you do after the money comes in, in gratitude to God. Seed faith giving is what you do before the money comes in, in faith and anticipation of the harvest to come. I'm going to repeat those sentences several times this morning. Now, how I knew to do this, I have no idea. I was, I was never taught this. I never heard this. I was never instructed in this. I don't know how I did it. But when, when I was 18 years old, took my father. Well, he took me to lunch, Jerry's Beachmont, Salem Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio. And I told him I was not going back to Miami University that I I had answered the call of God. I was going to Central Bible College and I was going to be a preacher. And he cut me off. Sue and I go off to Springfield, Missouri. There were something like six schools in one small town. So you couldn't get a job. I remember sitting there at Steak and Shake with Sue. Can you imagine? Can you picture it right now? Sitting there at the bar at Steak and Shake, filling out an application. And the manager was so nice. He came over. He said, look, He said, you know, there's no point in filling out an application because we have more applicants than we have positions. And so I kept my ear to the ground, and in a week or two, I heard about a position selling cookware outside sales. You only made money when you sold. And I don't want to get into all of that because I would wreck my time this morning, but I was rated 13th worldwide, working only part-time, 20, 22 hours a week against full-time guys. I was rated 13th worldwide. And I I cleared. I I didn't bring the, you'd have to bring this up into $2,022, but I was making $350, $400 a week working 20, 22 hours. And, uh, but here, how did I do that? How did I do that? How did I do that? I mean, my first weekend out, I said to my manager, Jim Cox, I said, "Uh, you're supposed to have... Two weeks of training after one weekend, I said, look, I don't need any more training. I need to make money. And I, he said, well, how many sets should I sell my first weekend out? He said, well, look, he said, you ought to be able to sell four sets. And so the next week I came back to sales meeting and I slid four contracts under the uh, window in the, at the warehouse. And uh, the guy gave me a funny look. I go to the sales meeting. Uh, he comes in and whispers in the sales manager's ear. He has a funny look. He goes out, talks to this guy, comes back in. He said, he said, you sold more cookware than anybody in this company last week. He said, you sold four sets. I said, well, you said I was supposed to sell four sets. <laughs> Amen. You said I should sell four sets. I said I should sell four sets. I sold four sets. But how did I do it Go on an ongoing basis? Not, not a one weekend deal. I would sit at Central Assembly of God. Sue and I were dating. I'd sit at Central Assembly of God and I would decide in my own mind how much money I wanted to make the next seven days. Now, I didn't say a zillion dollars. You can't be stupid. Amen. You can't be ridiculous. Amen. But I decided how much I wanted to make in the next seven days and I would write a check to Central Assembly of God for 20% of what I wanted to make. And I mean, and I made money. 
Now, somebody might say, well, was that a tithe or was that a seed faith offering? Well, if somebody came to me today with uh, the exact same scenario, I'd probably tell them it was both. You're, you're, you're giving God uh, a tithe off of what you did last week, then you're giving God another 10% off what you're anticipating of making this coming week. So we began our lives this way. Now when we got married, things slowed down a little bit. I had a job in a factory. Sue had a job at J.C. Penney's. I was working part-time while I was going to school full-time. Sue was working initially part-time, then later full-time while she was going to school part-time. And because that we weren't working commissions at that point, it slowed down a little bit. But even when uh, on my third job, I worked at Zales, and I don't mean any criticism in this, but the district manager was there that night. He was Jewish. The store manager was there that night. He was Jewish. The assistant store manager there was night. He was Jewish. And a, a cowboy uh, came in and said he wanted to look at a watch. Well, you know, he was not like a Saturday night cowboy. He was the real deal. He had the evidence on his boots. And so they, they motioned for me to show him the watches. Of course, they, they thought he couldn't spend any money at all. And so I took him over there and I showed him the Seiko watches. He said, well, I'm interested in a watch in the windows. So I said, well, go outside and point to it and I'll get it. And he went out, he pointed to the most expensive ladies diamond watch. And he comes back in. I mean, he, the, he pointed to it. I get it out, he comes in. He said, no, I need a ring to go with it. Typical guy, he wasn't really inspecting anything. He was just covering his basis for whatever event was coming up. You know, just a watch. Yeah, I need a watch, you know, some bling. You know, now I need a ring to go with the bling. You know, I need more bling. And uh, so the rules were, see, I wasn't allowed on the diamond counter. But if I had a customer that then wanted to go to the diamond counter, then I could go to the diamond counter. So I, I walk them over to the diamond side. And, you know, these guys are really giving me the evil eye. And uh, he bought the biggest diamond and, uh, you know, biggest diamond watch and you know, we were trained to say, well, would you like to open up a Zales charge? Because, you know, that was the way we were trained. He said, no, hey, hey, cowboy. He pulled out a wad of cash that would choke a horse. He said, I'll pay cash. And I learned a, le a great lesson to not judge people by the way they look. And that's why I don't judge you by the way you look. Some of you, some of you still look as rough as a cob, but uh, I don't judge it, amen, because I know you have great potential. Tell your neighbor, you have great potential in the Lord. Now, now, in the natural, you don't have so much potential. But in the Lord, you have great potential. Tell the neighbor on the other side, you have great potential in the Lord. Amen. So I'm talking about the miracle of seed faith giving. How to do things supernaturally you cannot do naturally. Now, weeks ago, I gave you a verse every Faith Christian Center member ought to, member ought to commit to memory. This verse should be on the tip of your tongue every day of your life. Hebrews 6, 14 in the King James saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. That's not in the Old Testament. Tell your neighbor, that's not in the Old Testament. That's in the New Testament. Saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Now let's go back and look at Mark 4. Here are the NIV, Mark 4, 26. Jesus also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the, seed, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the, ripe, as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. And every time I hear those words in the gospel, I pay extra special attention this is what the kingdom of God is like. Because when you see that phrase or read that phrase or hear that phrase, this is what the kingdom of God is like. He's going to be talking about principles. He's going to be talking about how it works. And what happens in the kingdom of God? A man scatters seed on the ground. Speaking about his death in John 12, 24, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So only what you give God can God multiply back into your life. If you give God nothing, and even if God were to multiply nothing, it would still be nothing. What is zero times 100? It's still zero. Say it out loud. God is my source. So I'm going to give so that it will be given unto me 
and after my seed is in the ground, I'm going to believe God for my harvest. Now here are these sentences again. This is key. Seed faith giving is not tithing, and tithing is not seed faith giving. Tithing is what you do after the money comes in, in gratitude to God. Seed faith giving is what you do before the money comes in, in faith and anticipation of the harvest to come. How, does, how, do, how do we know this is true? Luke 6, 38, Jesus said, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Pastor, you can't believe it's that simple. I do. Now, other things are involved. You have to be living a moral life. If you're married, you got to be faithful. You know, you got to have a J-O-B. This is not going to work. Sitting at home, smoking dope, you know, doing the bong, waiting for the welfare check to come in your Section 8 housing. Amen. There are other things involved. Work is involved. Tell your neighbor, unfortunately, work is involved. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. In Luke 6, 38, Jesus taught us that we should give our money as a seed faith offering. Seed money is thanking God in advance. It is like the grace you say before meals. You are giving thanks before the object of your thanks has been received into your mouth as if it has already been received. Seed faith giving is an act of seed planting, an act of faith, expecting a return just as the farmer does at planting time. The farmer plants in, ex the the farmer plants in expectation of harvest time. Say it out loud. The farmer plants in expectation of harvest time. I love my grandfather. He was a great big guy, about 6'2". And by the time I came along and met him, he was already old. His hair was white. But when I see pictures of him as a young man, his hair was red. Farmer. And I, he marked me. It marked me as a young man. I mean, they slaughtered their own hogs. They had their own chickens. My grandmother would go out there and gather up the eggs. Uh, I would go with him to buy piglets. Uh, he plowed his little farm and sowed his little farm and harvested his little farm. I was there one year. It was an odd trip. We were there at an off time, and, and I remember helping with the corn harvest. I mean, he did all the work. Yet when we sat at the breakfast table, this man's man bowed his head and gave thanksgiving to God for the food set before us and it marked my life because he did all the work him and my grandma they did all the yet, yet he's bowing his head and thanking God for the food on the table can you picture that in your mind's eye well that's what seed faith giving is we're 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 giving God thanks in advance for what we know is coming now, something else about my grandfather. What kind of farmer or what kind of gardener would sow seeds without anticipation of the harvest? This is one of the biggest criticisms we have heard all these years on this subject right here. Well, you're just giving to get. Duh, yes. <laughs> just like my grandfather sowed cotton to get what? Just like my grandfather sowed corn to get what? Corn. Now, I'm not trying to be offensive, but when a young couple gets married and uh, they decide then later on it's time to have a baby, what has to happen? So a seed's got to be sown, a seed's got to be sown, a seed's got to be sown. Amen. That's right, amen. A seed's got to be sown into a woman. Right. Somebody who was born a woman. Amen. That's the way that works. I mean, we cannot get too elementary in 2022 because the world's gone stupid. Of course, you what? Sow to why? Reap. If you don't want to reap, would you sow? No. See, we live in a culture where people think chickens come from packages. 
Chickens don't come from packages. Chickens come from farms. Amen? Amen. And the only way that works is you've got to have some roosters. See, our, our culture is trying to get rid of all the roosters. Amen. Say it again. The farmer plants in expectation of harvest time. This is why seed faith giving is different from tithing. In tithing, you give God a tenth after the money is made. In tithing, you give God one-tenth after you have received the money. In seed faith giving, as emphasized by Jesus in Luke 6, 38, you give the money before the expected return. Now, all these years at Faith Christian Center, we have made a distinction between tithes and offerings. We have always made the distinction between a tithe being a set amount. Say it out loud. A set amount. One-tenth of all the money crossing your hands. Thank God the government's not in charge. It'd be 11% Monday. It'd be 12% Tuesday. It'd be 13% Wednesday. A set amount. Whereas offerings are not a set amount. Offerings are as led by the Holy Spirit or offerings are as according to your faith. The distinction we are making in this present series is to further define offerings and to explain why offerings work. To further define offerings and to explain why offerings work. This is why you cannot hold back on the tithe and give it as an offering. This is why you cannot hold back on the tithe and give part of it as an offering. That simply will not work. It will not work because, even, because you're not walking in financial covenant with God until you have given him one-tenth of everything that has already crossed your hands. This is financial covenant with God. Now, I see a lot of new faces, and I see some doubt and unbelief. Well, you are without excuse, you doubters. I mean, they're pushing gun control, but the worst cities in America for murder are the cities with the most gun control. Amen. See, in other words, they're not critically thinking. They're not thinking critically. The problem is not the guns. The problem is the bombs. Put the bombs in prison, then nobody's shooting anybody. But instead, they're letting them loose. Guy committed murder just in Dallas the other day, got out on a $1,000 bond. That's ridiculous. How about this? Welfare. Man, we've been doing welfare since the mid-60s. I mean, we spent $25 trillion on welfare since the mid-60s. Is, is, are, the are there more poor percentage-wise or, or less poor? There's more poor. That didn't work. See, people cannot deal with reality. Remember that movie where somebody said, you can't handle the truth. But it, right here, God says, this is the way it works in the word of God. I'm not making this up. The written word of God, this is how it works. Malachi 3, God says, test me in this. But people, people won't even try it. They won't even try it. Well, I don't believe that. Well, but you, you know, you did everything Fauci said do. Amen. See, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a... I've been, doing, I've been in the people business now 49 years. I've been preaching the gospel 49 years. And I have taken notice that the people who won't believe God believe Fauci. Amen. In other words, you heard, you repeated, and you took action. Amen. And that is exactly what we are teaching on how to make the written word of God work for you. Right. You hear the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You repeat what God has said, and then you take action on what God has said. Amen. Yeah. That's it. Amen. But you got people like Gavin Newsom and Trudeau, and you know, they did everything Fauci said, but they keep catching this bug over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And I didn't do one doggone thing the man said, and I ain't caught it yet. We had our pictures taken in Florida, and the photographer was raised full gospel, went to Zion Bible School. And uh, she said, well, how did you make that decision? I said, well, it, frankly, I said, it was the easiest decision I've ever made in my entire life. I said, there was nothing to it. I said, I've made some hard decisions in my life. But I said, this one wasn't hard at all. She said, why not? I said, well, it was just this, believe God or believe Fauci. Right. Amen. Seemed, pretty, seemed to be a pretty easy decision to me. Amen. Amen. 
And I told my family, you got to understand where I'm coming from. I'd rather go sit under one of my 530 trees and believe God and go out than to submit to all of this stuff. Amen. 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 Just seems to me to be the easier thing to believe God. Tell your neighbor, have faith in God. Tell the neighbor on the other side, have faith in God. See, a lot of people are trying to give offerings when they've not even enrolled in God's financial blessing covenant. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus emphasized seed faith giving. Jesus said, Luke 6, 38, given it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And Jesus said, given it will be given to you. He did not say after it's given to you, give. No, the giving comes first. The, the giving comes first. The action comes first. The sowing comes first. Then the reaping, then the reaping, then the reaping. Say it out loud, then the reaping. Seed faith giving, though, seed faith giving then is both a sowing and a reaping. And this is why Paul writes as he does in Philippians 4.15. Moreover, as you Philippians know in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only, giving and receiving. It's not just giving and it's not just receiving. It's not just giving and it's not just receiving. It's giving and receiving. And even Paul saying... To the Philippian church, not everybody gets it because in all the places I've been, you're the only church that got it. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting it. Tell the neighbor on the other side, I'm getting it. It's not just a matter of giving, it's a matter of giving and receiving. So tithing is what you do after the money comes in in gratitude to God. Seed faith giving is what you do before the money comes in. In, in faith and anticipation of the money coming. Seed faith giving then is participation in both sowing and reaping. The farmer does this all the time. The farmer always gives his seed to the ground first. Never in the history of mankind, humankind, has a farmer ever reaped a harvest and then sowed the seed. The farmer always gives his seed to the ground first. In fact, unless the farmer gives his seed to the ground first, he would be foolish to expect a harvest at all, and yet that is what God's people do. They're not doers of the Word of God. That's why they do the January fast, the Daniel fast. They drink anointing oil. That's why they... They do prayer chains. That's why they get on Facebook. Everybody pray about this. Everybody pray about that. Look, all these problems could be solved if we would simply have faith in God and be doers of the Word of God and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. How many of you have been in this church, let's say more than 30 years? Let me see your hand. You've been in this church more than 30 years. All right. How many times in 30 years have you ever heard me one time say, I need for all of you to pray about this or that? Now, one time, when we were in Africa as missionaries, I was teaching at the East Africa School of Theology, and I loved going out and preaching in new places, you know, brand new places where churches were being pioneered or churches had been pioneered, brand new places. One Sunday, we went out to this far out place with one of my students. I had the student, I had Sue and Austin, and so the idea was that we're going to preach and uh, then we're going to baptize. So after church is over, we, we walk over here to the river. I had worn <coughs> jeans or change into jeans. I don't remember. Walk down to the river. And this Bible school student says, uh, I don't remember what they called me. I, had, I didn't have a doctorate at that point. I don't remember what they called me. He said, do you want to pray or do you want me to pray? I said, pray about what? He said, the crocs and the snake, the, the crocodiles and the snakes. I said, I will pray. Amen. See, if we're talking about who's going to buy lunch, well, you can pray. But if we're talking about crocodiles and snakes, I'm going to do the praying. Amen. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you have to learn how the word works so you can do your own praying. You have to learn how the word works so you can do your own sowing and reaping. Amen. Say it again. The farmer plants in expectation of harvest time. In seed faith giving you sow your financial seed in order to claim the return Jesus promised in Luke 6, 38. In seed faith giving you sow the financial seed for the God of the harvest to multiply back into your life. Now I realize, I do, I do, I get it, that this is brand new information for some of you all. I do, I understand it. 
I got saved at Bethesda Missionary Temple at Van Dyke, Nevada Avenues in 1960 when I was five years old. I've been hearing this since I was five years old. I realize this may be brand new information to you, but if you will think about the farmer and if you will think about the gardener, it will help you. The same genius architect that designed this earth is the same genius architect that designed seed time and harvest in the kingdom of God and with regard to finances. The same genius architect. Jesus said, Matthew 17, 20, I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So what is the key to nothing being impossible for you? Faith as a seed. Faith as a seed. Faith as a seed. Faith as a seed is the key to nothing being impossible for you. If you have faith as a seed, or if your believing becomes seed faith, no matter how small it seems to be, it will meet needs and problems that appear as impossible as mountains before you. This is because each act of faith is a seed planted and will be multiplied many times over. Jesus connected giving and seed sowing and laid down the example as the Christian's lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Hear me now. Why are Christians poor? First of all, because too many of them have never entered into God's financial covenant through tithing. Too many Christians are not only not blessed, they have actually placed themselves under a financial curse by robbing God of what God says belongs to him. And second of all, too many Christians are poor because they have never entered into this supernatural lifestyle of seed faith giving taught by Jesus and if you don't enter into this supernatural lifestyle taught by Jesus, then you're simply on your own. You are left to your own abilities and limitations. And I'm not going to be left to my own abilities and limitations. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Now when they're printing a trillion dollars every six months, now when it takes $74 to put a half a tank of gas in a vehicle, I am not going to operate by my own intelligence. I'm not going to operate by my own ability. I'm not going to operate in what I can do. I've just chosen not to do it. I'm not going to do it. I have a father, hallelujah. hallelujah, and he loves me, and he says to me on this, what is today? 26th, on this 26th of June in the year of our Lord, 2022, surely blessing, I will bless thee, surely multiplying, I will multiply thee, hallelujah, say it out loud with me, surely blessing, I will bless thee. Surely multiplying, I will multiply thee. That's who we serve. That's the God of heaven. That's the God of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? Seed faith giving is not tithing, and tithing is not seed faith giving. Tithing is what you do after the money comes in, in gratitude to God. Seed faith giving is what you do before the money comes in, in faith and anticipation of the money coming. If you are a Christian and you want to live a blessed life financially, first, you give God one-tenth of everything that crosses your hands. This is the financial covenant that God has had with men since Abraham in Genesis 14, 20. <clears throat> Actually, before that, with uh, Seth, amen. And I did not come prepared with the book of Genesis in my mind. The first murderer was? First murderer was who? Cain. And he killed his brother, Abel. Then came along Seth. Yeah, so, so Abel gave, Cain gave some. Abel gave the first that he had. Seed faith giving is not tithing. Tithing is not seed faith giving. Tithing is a seed owed. <laughs> Whereas seed faith giving is a seed sowed. Say it out loud. Tithing is a seed owed. See, why is it a seed owed? Because you already got the money. Tithing is a seed owed. Seed faith giving is a seed sowed. 
Malachi 3, 7, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a man rob God, yet you rob me? But you ask, how do we rob you in tithes and offerings? You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. The New King James Version says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. It is God's promise to the tither to pour out the blessings of God upon him to cause material things to be renewed and to block negative financial resort, re results. But even on top of all of that, there is still a law of return and tithing because God says, see, if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. And you know the number one thing, I see a lot of new people. I see a lot of new people. I see a lot of new faces. I see people giving me the stink eye. But you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm protected of the Lord because we got 20, 25 million dollars of assets right here and not a dime of it. Not a dime, not a dime of debt on it. Not a dime of debt on it. Not a, so obviously Pastor Gene and Sue didn't get all the money. Do you understand? You don't believe me? Check it out. Hire an attorney, check with the city, the county of Tarrant and see if there's any mortgage or debt on this property. There is none. 20, 25 million dollars. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So apparently the word works. Amen. I said apparently the word works. Amen. And look around here. We don't have four or five thousand people here. So this bunch right here did all this. Amen. This bunch right here did all this. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Ain't got no money from Hollywood yet. <laughs> Although we'll take it. Amen. It's God's promise to bless the tither, to pour out blessings upon him, to cause material things to be renewed, to block negative financial results. And then on top of all of that, to cause this law of return to work. <clears throat> Whether it is in tithing or seed faith giving, it is still a seed sowed for God to multiply first into the gospel, to fund the gospel, and then to help you, the giver, to receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You ever buy a box of cereal lately? You buy a box of cereal lately? It's, you open it up, it's like the Grand Canyon inside of there. <laughs> I mean, if they were really worried about the planet, they would, they would stop all this waste on plastic and boxes by a, a, allowing cereal companies to put half, half to fill boxes half full. Ever bought a, bag of, bought a big family bag of potato chips lately? Anybody did that? You open it up, what's in there? Half. I read because of inflation, they were taking one Dorito chip out of every bag. That's the world, man. That's the world. And look, if Bernie Sanders was in charge, that's all you'd get every day for your ration is one Dorito. But my God, my God, I want to give credit and glory and honor to my Father God. Hallelujah. 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 My Father God opens up the windows of heaven. My Father God pours out more upon us than we're even able to contain. Hallelujah. I give my Father God the credit, the glory, and the honor for all that you see here and all that has been done here and all that has been accomplished here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Father God did it. Amen. Amen. Seed faith giving is not tithing, and tithing is not seed faith giving. Tithing is what you do after the money comes in. That's the seed owed. In gratitude to God. Seed faith giving is what you do before the money comes in. That's a seed sowed in faith and anticipation of the harvest to come. And we know it works because Jesus himself said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. So don't go to lunch and be cheap with the, the waiter or waitress. It's a lifestyle. Hallelujah. 
We were getting ready to check out of the hotel on vacation, and I asked Sue if she'd tip the maid, and Sue said, well, I was going to, but uh, the maid that we normally have is not the one that we had today. And I said, well, uh, see it, call downstairs, see if you can get that one up here that's been doing most of the work. Uh, we, you know, we want to be generous, amen. They, they know we're not drinking wine. They know we're not drinking booze. They know we don't have a bar tab. They, they probably Google us. They probably know exactly who we are. We cannot be cheap. <laughs> are you hearing me? Generous on every occasion, generous on every occasion, generous on every occasion. Why, why, why? How can we even afford to do that with all this inflation going on and all this money printing going on? Because we have a secret. Hallelujah. This old world might be connected to a drag queen and a Fauci, although I think maybe Fauci may be in drag himself. I mean, who knows? <laughs> nobody, really nobody knows. Is that a man? Is that a woman? Is that a hog? Is that a frog? I mean, Nobody knows. I mean, who knows what he is? He may be an alien. He could be from outer space. I don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows nothing anymore. But I know this. My God is a truth-telling God. My God is true to his word. And my God causes his word to come to pass. I'm not talking about luck. I'm not talking about chance. I'm saying God is a truth-telling God. And you can count on God 100% of the time. Somebody shout glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout thank you, Father God. You're a truth-telling God. Surely blessing he will bless you and multiplying he will multiply you. Surely blessing he will bless you and multiplying he will multiply you. Surely blessing he will bless you and multiplying he will multiply you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm ready for the week of increase. I could go right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great year to be alive. Let's bow our heads. You may be here this morning and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior of your life. That's where faith in God begins. Faith in God does not begin with healing. Faith in God does not begin with success. Faith in God does not begin with prosperity. Faith in God begins by making Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior of your life individually and personally. Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again. He said in Revelation chapter 3, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. So you know what an awesome privilege, what an opportunity to confess our sins to Father God, to ask Father God for forgiveness in the name of Jesus and to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior personally and individually. What a privilege, what an opportunity. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I've never done that, but I want to do so this morning. Pastor, I want to be included in this prayer. Pray for me, Pastor, because I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to enter into this covenant that you have spoken of this morning. I never heard about God wanting to bless me. I never heard about God wanting to prosper me and multiply me. It's news to me, but I want in on this. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. Pastor, pray for me. I want to be included in this prayer. Pastor, I want to be saved. Pastor, I want to be born again. Pastor, I want to give my life to God. Thank you so much. How many others this morning? Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. You may be here this morning and you're away from God. You're backslidden. You're not living for the Lord like you once did. You're not living for the Lord like you promised him you would. The word says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many this morning would say, Pastor, that's me. I'm away from God. I'm backslidden. I'm not living for the Lord like I know I should. I'm not living for the Lord like I promised him I would. But Pastor, I don't want to remain in a backslidden condition, not another day. I want to give my life back to God. I want to recommit my life to God. I want to make it right, and I want to live for him from this day to my last day. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up. Lift it up high enough to where I can see it. Yes. How many others? How many others? Yes, thank you. Everyone standing, everybody in the room standing. If you raised your hand for either invitation, I want you to do this. I want you to gather your belongings. I don't want your mind on your stuff. I want your mind on what the Lord is going to do in your life this morning. If you raised your hand for either invitation, I want you to gather your belongings up and I want you to step boldly into that aisle and I want you to join me here at the front. We're going to pray. We're going to pray and then we're going to put a Bible into your hand and a book, God's very own child. Amen. Be bold about it.
For the sake of those that may be watching online that want to give their lives to the Lord, let's pray the prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, I give you my life. Time's gone by. I've gone my own way. I've done my own thing. I've lived for self. But today I repent and I turn from that old way of living and I give you my life. I believe in my heart. You raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. And I thank you for not rejecting me, but for receiving me unto yourself and into your family. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you're watching online, you can connect with us at fccarlington.com slash salvation. Let us know about your decision. And we'd be happy to send you that book, God's Very Own Child. If you need a Bible, we'll send you a Bible. All of our needs are met. Hallelujah. So we're able to be generous on every occasion. Amen, amen, amen.